These are your visual notes for the basic biology of viruses. A brief introduction. So what you have here is a picture illustrating first a, bac a virus. This one, big one here is a bacteria. And the one that is even bigger in the background of which this is the nucleus is an eukaryotic cell. So you can visually see how big an eukaryotic cell is, a bacteria much smaller, and then the virus very tiny. So this is just to illustrate that viruses are much, much smaller than bacteria. They are very simple creatures. They are technically not alive. And they're technically not cells because they do not have all the components of a cell. So officially we call them infectious particles and a virus by itself without a cell cannot do anything. Now what are the viruses made out of? They're always going to have at least two components. Two. Two. Component number one, they're always going to have a nucleic acid, the genetic material that is going to carry information and that can be either DNA or RNA. Viruses are the only ones that can have RNA as a nucleic acid basically to carry the genetic information. Remember all cells, bacteria and eukaryotic cells, they all have only DNA. The second component that you're gonna have in a virus is gonna, you're gonna have what is called a protein coat or a capsid. I like the word coat because you put on a coat and, or capsid, that's a more formal word. And basically this is a protein or a bunch of proteins that cover and protect the nucleic acid. And finally, some viruses, and this is not all of them, some viruses are going to have a, what's called a membranous envelope. Basically it's a membrane, but that membrane they basically took it from one of the cells that they infected. So a few views of some common viruses. Sorry, the pictures are kind of uh, in black and white, but you're gonna pretty well, pretty soon see pictures in color, beautiful picture. Just to illustrate the two types of, the two main components of a virus. Here, the first one, this is one of the first viruses that was very well studied. It's the tobacco mosaic virus, obviously attacks tobacco plants. And you can see here that the, the nucleic acid is RNA, is that coil thing there that goes all the way down inside. And then each one of these things that looks like scales is really a protein and all of them basically they are surrounding the RNA. So they are basically a protective layer around the RNA. Just like in our bodies, our DNA, is, our nucleic acid DNA is precious and is surrounded by the nuclear membrane. Here, this protein coat or capsid is what uh, surrounds the nucleic acid, in this case RNA for toba tobacco mosaic virus. Here you have an adenovirus. This is very important now because they are being used to deliver uh, some of the COVID vaccines. We'll talk about it in class. Adenoviruses normally are uh, they infect the upper respiratory system and adenoviruses have DNA inside as the nucleic acid. They have the proteins around forming the capsid, but looky looky, some of these proteins are actually glycoproteins. So you have the protein and you have a sugar attached to them. So not always the proteins is just one type. Many types of viruses like uh, the coronavirus, COVID, will have several different types of proteins in the outside. Then right here you have one of the viruses that has this membranous envelope. And this is one of the flu viruses, the common flu. So the common flu is kind of special. You have RNA as nucleic acid. But instead of having only one molecule, like all the other ones, these are going to have six molecules. One, two, three, four, five, and six. They have six prot uh, molecules of RNA, and each one of them is surrounded by a layer of protein, protecting it. The picture is not very good in this, at this moment. And then, so you have nucleic acid, the capsid, 
and then you have this other massive structure outside this is actually the membranous envelope that is a piece of membrane that they took from the host and of course this um, envelope also has attached to it glycoproteins basically just like all the membranes that, that they can have proteins these are proteins in the membrane and the proteins have little carbohydrates attached to it glycoproteins and finally, one other virus that you are probably familiar with, these are bacteriophages. These are very special because the only thing that they infect, of course, are bacteria. And these look like the lunar modules that went to the moon. And these guys have DNA inside there. And they have, these are proteins actually that surround the DNA but they have a very complex rest of the body structure also just made out of proteins uh, and this other stuff is used to be able to attach to a bacteria and inject the DNA. Uh, these are unique in the way that these guys do not enter the cells, do not enter the cells, they just inject their nucleic acid into the cells. Pretty much every other virus that we know is gonna enter your cells. In all the eukaryotic viruses, they're gonna go inside the cells because our cells are bigger and the system is gonna be more complex. Now, what's the point of a virus? And what I want you to get out of the, this next diagram is just this is a very general view that basically is gonna summarize what viruses do. Okay, this doesn't refer to any specific virus, it's a just general to show you what viruses do and of course depending on if they have DNA or RNA as nucleic acid the details are gonna change and that's what you're gonna have to figure out with each virus so I highly encourage you if you have the chance to take a virology class in college oh do it because these guys are fascinating so first all the viruses we call them obligate intracellular parasites because they need to go inside uh, without a cell they don't do anything they are very specific for the type of cells because to enter a cell to enter a cell they have to attach to a receptor a protein in the surface of the cell and this receptor is not a receptor for a virus at all these cell surface receptors, these proteins that are in the surface of our cells, they do other jobs. It's just that the viruses are kind of hijacking them and using them to sneaky get into our cells. So again, to enter a cell, you have to have a specific receptor in that membrane. And different types of cells have different receptors in their membranes depending on the function of the cell because they have to use a specific receptor for to enter a cell and the cells have different receptors because of different functions usually usually all the viruses tend to be host specific for the most part they are host specific however however if two different species two different species of organisms have receptors that are very similar then the virus from one species can jump and attack a different one because the receptor is very similar so for example uh, the coronavirus uses a protein in our cell membranes called the ACE2 receptor and we have it and several other creatures have and they have exactly the same one with very small differences so that's why for example the coronavirus has been able to attack humans and chimpanzees and dogs and a couple other creatures because we have all the same very similar protein without very few differences right? So what are the viruses going to do? They're always going to get into a cell and they're going to use everything that you have in the cell to make more copies of themselves. So here we go. Ready? We are going to start with the general model. Here we have a virus. There is the DNA that I kind of color in red and the capsid outside. 
As soon as the virus makes contact with the receptor and it's gonna go into the cell, it's gonna disintegrate. So here are all the proteins that make the capsid, all the proteins that make the capsid or the coat, so they are separated, and it releases the nucleic acid, in this case, the DNA. All right, so it disintegrates and the point is to release this. Now, what's gonna happen in general, all the cells, all the viruses are gonna do the same. One of the goals is to make copies of this DNA. One of the goals is going to be to make copies of this DNA. So the virus is going to use all your machinery for DNA replication. Remember all those enzymes of DNA replication? Is the virus is going to use all of them to make more and more and more copies of that DNA. At the same time, this DNA is going to be transcribed transcription using RNA polymerase from your cells and this RNA is going to be transcribed into messenger RNA and this messenger RNA is going to have the code to make all the proteins that the virus needs to make the capsid and any other proteins that you need to have in the membranes there of the virus. Alright, so again you make copies of the DNA and you transcribe the DNA to make the proteins. So now what do you have? You have a, your cell is infected, it's not able to do anything because everything is hijacked by your virus. That's why you feel sick too, because your cells cannot work. They are doing something for somebody else. So here you have a lot of uh, DNA, viral DNA. You have a lot of proteins and this is the most amazing process is called self-assemblies like those magnetic toys that just pop, come together because that's exactly what the virus does all the components kind of just come together and assemble and when they are assembled you know here is the dna so all these proteins surrounded and when this is ready comes out and usually when they come out they come out in such a huge numbers that they destroy your cell and your cell is dead and then you have millions of these ready to infect any uh, more cells around or to be uh, expelled out of your body and infect other individuals all right so now i'm going to show you uh what's a specific virus and this is hiv because it does something creepy and very interesting and that's why it has been so hard to get rid of it and uh, even hard to develop a vaccine to it. I'm trying to adjust this. All right, here we go. Ready? HIV. This is called a retrovirus. And it's a retrovirus because it has RNA as the nucleic acid. But in addition to the RNA that has two identical strands, HIV carries inside two enzymes. So I kind of lied to you. In addition to DNA and protein, some viruses carry some extra enzymes with them. In this case, the proteins, reverse transcriptase. Reverse transcriptase is an enzyme that allows RNA to be transformed or copied into DNA. That's why it's called reverse transcriptase because it's transcription in reverse. All right? And this DNA that you get is called cDNA or complementary DNA. All right? So that's what this enzyme is going to do. Okay, so the virus has two copies of RNA. It carries a, a copy of the reverse transcriptase. And then it has an envelope. That's the viral envelope. And this viral envelope has on its surface glycoproteins. So ready? So here comes the virus. It's going to get into, make contact with a receptor in a cell. And when it makes contact, the membrane of the virus is going to fuse with the membrane of the cell. The capsid with the nucleic acid is going to go inside. It's going to disintegrate. And what you are going to have here is 
the two molecules of RNA. Now, these two molecules of RNA, you have RNA here, and you have the enzyme reverse transcriptase attached. What reverse transcriptase is going to do is, so this is RNA, is going to basically make a copy of this, but in DNA version. So here is the RNA, and this one is going to be DNA. And so we call this a hybrid because you have one of each. And then the enzyme goes again a second time until you get two DNAs. And that's your double helix right there. So it copies one side, gets one side, and then it does it again. So you can get your double helix there. Now here comes the worst part. This DNA goes into the nucleus, goes into the nucleus, and inserts into our DNA. So this right here is the DNA of the virus, and it's inserted somewhere in between our DNA. And it's going to stay there forever, and we cannot get rid of it. And our cells have no idea because DNA is DNA, ATCGs, with the same sugar and the same uh, phosphate group. So you are going to have that foreign DNA in incorporated into your DNA. What happens now that you have this DNA there? Well, really simple. This DNA is going to be transcribed into RNA. Some of these molecules that are transcribed are going to be function as messenger RNA. They are going to go to the ribosomes and they're going to start making all the proteins that you need to make the virus. The capsid proteins and all those proteins that are in the membranous envelope. Again, this DNA that is in the nucleus keeps on being transcribed and of course when you transcribe it you end up with RNA, which is what makes the genome of this virus. So, you make a lot of transcription, a lot of transcription. All these are molecules of RNA. This other one is being transcribed and translated into proteins. And just like before, all this is going to self-assemble. All this is going to self-assemble the RNA and all the proteins. And the virus is going to come out. It's going to pick up a piece of your membrane and you have right there your brand new virus that is ready to go and infect other cells. And unfortunately for HIV, what HIV infects are some specific cells of your immune system that we'll mention when we discuss this. So I wanted to give you this because this is a very general view and here you get a little bit more detail. And this is going to change, of course, with the different viruses. But now that you understand the basics, you can understand the process of how viruses replicate inside your body, no matter what the nucleic acid have. DNA, RNA is all the same. The goals are two. To make the proteins for the capsid or the envelope and to make more copies of their nucleic acid. And for that, what they are going to do is they are going to use everything that you have. They use your amino acids, your enzymes, your ATP. Remember, all these cost a lot of energy. They are going to be using all your ATP. So, yeah, they take over and we just sit there waiting for them to be done. All right. So I hope with this you have a better understanding of viruses and in the next set of activities that you're going to be doing, you'll probably get also to understand coronavirus. All right. So thank you very much for listening. I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.